On June 12, 2012, at around 2 a.m., I left an abusive relationship with only what I could carry in two hands. It was pouring rain, and the car that parked next to me parked so close that I got wedged in between the two cars, holding all this stuff as pictures from my entire life slipped out of the small box that they were in and started flying around and landing in the puddles on the ground. I crammed all of my belongings as quickly as I could into the car, terrified that he would come downstairs and hurt me, or even worse, possibly accidentally kill me to get that car. I had made the mistake of putting our shared car in my name and getting loans to help him, and then setting the payments up to be taken directly out of my paychecks. So when I left, I only had enough money to pay for my phone bill and food. I successfully made it out of that parking lot that night with the car. And for the next year and a half, I bounced around friends' couches three days at a time to make sure that I didn't overstay my welcome, despite their offers to stay long term. Some would call it homeless. <laughs> I called it the Angel World Tour. And I had a blast actually getting a chance to spend time with the people that I cared about. I took this painful, traumatic time, and I learned what I could from it, and I found the adventure in it. I wish more people would allow themselves to experience times of uncertainty this way. <laughs> Most of us don't celebrate what's unknown or uncertain in our lives. In fact, most people go to great lengths to stay out of that scary gray area. You know what I'm talking about. We want everything to go exactly as planned. So we follow a societal blueprint and we plan and we plan even if we lose our true selves in the process. It gives us a sense of control over our lives, a sense that we're doing what we're supposed to do. We ask five-year-olds to tell us what they want to be when they grow up, and we demand that high school seniors know exactly what they plan to do with the rest of their lives when they're not even old enough to vote. We grow up with all kinds of messaging, both at home and in the media, that puts value on certainty, on how much and what we know on following a clear, tried, and true path that will lead us to the kind of stability we're supposed to have. Many of us compare our lives to that of the Joneses. You know, the ones who post pictures on social media of their perfect lives full of perfect, well-thought-out decisions, Perfect health, perfect careers, perfect parenting techniques, perfect relationships, perfect vacations. I mean, they have it all figured out. They just know what they're doing in life. Ah, <sighs> They're so happy. Except that's a bunch of bull. We may have an area of life, or even two or three if we're lucky, pretty much figured out, but no one has it all together. We just want people to think we do. It makes us look reliable and smart and successful and happy. And we want to look happy. We want to look happy so badly 
that we're willing to sacrifice actually being happy for the facade of looking happy. I mean, God forbid someone finds out we may be struggling financially or spending 40 hours a week or more at a job that we wish we could walk out of tomorrow, or a kid has behavioral issues and we don't know how to fix it. Our desire for certainty and control and checking off the right boxes gets in the way of us living our lives fully. It robs us of the opportunity to grow and learn and discover ourselves and the world in a truly authentic way because certainty leaves no room for discovery, for failure for adventure. I would know. My life has been quite the adventure in some exciting and not so exciting ways. I started booking acting jobs when I was six. <laughs> I took a flying lesson when I was 11, because why fly in a plane when you can fly the plane? I started recording in professional recording studios when I was 14. My mom worked for an airline when I was growing up, so I flew free. So naturally, <laughs> when I was 17, I wanted creme brulee once, so I flew to Paris myself overnight to get some. The same year, I wanted Cajun food, so I flew to New Orleans for lunch, and I met Britney Spears' mom and sister on the plane, uh, and I asked them where to get lunch. For the record, she said to get a po' boy in the French Quarter, but I didn't. I got something else. I traveled to Kenya alone when I was 19. I chose not to go to college. I was very fortunate to have a mother who supported this way of being. I'm not a parent, but as a daughter, I highly recommend this parenting style. But it wasn't all exciting. I've also experienced quite a bit of trauma. Sexual abuse, sexual assault, the domestic violence that I mentioned earlier. And I was even mugged at gunpoint when I was 17. That kind of trauma early on has a way of making the brain expect uncertainty. According to a Yale University study on cognition, our brains crave stability but benefit from volatility. We actually learn more in uncertain environments as our brains are forced to create and update a set of rules to help us predict how our world works. From an evolutionary perspective, we gravitate toward the familiar as experiences we've survived are recognized by our brains as safer than the unknown. Our brains find comfort in the familiar even when it's associated with a negative feeling. So a brain like mine finds comfort in uncertainty and sometimes even chaos because that's what it knows best. Maybe that's why I so intentionally created a life of adventure growing up. I gravitated toward experiences that I thought were positive uncertainty to cope with the negative uncertainty. Maybe that's why I'm an artist. I'm a songwriter, I'm a singer, and I paint. So I've chosen, arguably, the most uncertain career path possible. The music industry is just one big old no with a, a yes sprinkled in every now and then. It's not the kind of career that promises a promotion or a raise for a job well done, and there are no paid sick days or vacation days, but that's the price I pay for the thrill of getting to do what I love and connecting with others through my art. I'll admit, I've even found a thrill in not knowing how my rent would get paid sometimes because it felt like an adventure. First, I'd have a meltdown and feel sorry for myself and think it was the end of the world, but it never is. In reality, it would force me to be resourceful and creative 
and discover new parts of myself. It was always a doorway to new possibilities that I'd never otherwise encounter. When I choose to be courageous and humble and honest with others about that uncertainty and overall not having it figured outness, I connect with people more authentically. That's because that's all of us even the Joneses. No one connects on being perfect because it's not a real thing. We connect with our humility, with our humanity. And I'm not suggesting that we live in a world of complete chaos. No, I'm suggesting that we embrace the inevitable uncertainty as it comes and allow it to take us on an adventure that may just lead us to the kind of clarity that frees us to be our authentic selves. As a creative, I find most of my inspiration in those gray, uncertain areas. I had zero experience in kids' music, so naturally, I just had to write a kid's song, right? That song got my writing partner and me a deal with Nickelodeon to write songs for Dora the Explorer and Dora and Friends into the City, which led to Sesame Street and others. This led to over 40 songs in those shows airing all over the world every single day. Another example is my painting. I thought I just wasn't good at it. <laughs> that was until my good friend Monique asked me to paint a mural of the Disney princesses in her daughter's room. Her daughter, Michaela, was born with a rare liver disease and would need a transplant. So she wanted to make Michaela's room special. I said yes. I had no idea what I was doing, but I figured I'd figure it out. Here's that painting. And here are some others that I've done. Since that moment of figuring out I could paint, Some argue that I just have natural talent. But I argue that my openness to the possibilities that existed in the uncertainty of no, not knowing how to paint is what allowed me to figure it out in the first place. Had I just decided that I didn't know how to paint and I was unable to learn, I would have never picked up a paintbrush. It was embracing the uncertainty that led to something really beautiful. Now I can't imagine my life without it. I've been thinking a lot about uncertainty lately as everything in my life feels really out of control. It even feels too uncertain for me. Last year, I was diagnosed with a rare, incurable, autoimmune, neuromuscular disease called myasthenia gravis, which causes weakness of the voluntary muscles. The hallmark of MG is variability. Uncertainty much? Sometimes my days are somewhat normal as long as I don't overdo it. And sometimes I'm so weak that I can't hold up a cup of coffee or wash my hair or change my clothes, or talk without getting extremely weak or short of breath. I went from being on a plane sometimes every week to not knowing what any given day will look like for me. It's affecting my voice right now as I speak. Just last year, I was hospitalized with my first MG exacerbation, which had me very close to needing a ventilator to breathe. I can't control how this disease will affect my body, but I can make adjustments that will allow me to continue to find adventure in the chaos and uncertainty of it all. Some days come with a lot of frustration and tears and humbling myself to ask for and accept help. 
but it sure beats trying to keep up with the fallacy that is the Joneses. Sometimes my voice gets weak, which makes it impossible to work as a songwriter and singer. Similar weakness also makes painting difficult. And sometimes existing difficult. This is not how I envisioned my life, but I refuse to just give up. So I'm learning to paint my vision just a little differently. That is an adventure all in itself. <sighs> my message to you. When uncertainty comes your way, embrace it. Please say yes. Let go of the rules. Let go of the shame. Allow it to take you on an adventure so you can truly live and connect with yourself authentically. Because if you're not connecting with yourself authentically, you're not connecting with others fully. Let uncertainty lead you to that place of true clarity. Let it challenge everything you think you know about your identity and your desires and your abilities. Let it be the breeding ground for inspiration, for that bold next step. There is so much there for you to discover. Life really is an adventure when you make it one. Thank you.